when should you, as the buyer, potential buyer of a piece of property, uh, kick the can down the road on a, a problem? Uh, in, in this video, we're talking about you know problem with, with boundaries, with land title or land use planning. So you're going to buy a parcel, you've done some due diligence, uh, but you find a problem or one of your, your consultants finds a problem and they come back to you and say, they say, hey, here's this issue we found. Uh, when is it a good idea to just kind of say, ah, I'll worry about that later and move forward with the purchase? So what, what kind of can are you kicking down the road? What kind of problems are we talking about? I'm just going to give you some a real quick list of examples of the kinds of things that could happen. Uh, could be a building encroachment. So you've got a building over a property line. Maybe your parcel's landlocked. It doesn't have legal access to a public road. Could be there's some un unauthorized use of the property that could turn into or may have already developed into what we call unwritten rights, squatter's rights. Uh, it could be gaps or overlaps in the deeds. So there's a question about where the where the boundaries of the parcels are located. I mean, there's a there's a lot more things we could add to that list, but that gives you an idea of the, the type of problems that we're talking about. So when you find that kind of problem where your consultant does um, as part of the due diligence on a purchase, real estate purchase, when is it okay to just say, ah, you know what, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna kick that can down the road, I'm gonna buy now, I'll worry about fixing the problem later. When is that okay? Well, let's talk about when you can kick the can, because sometimes you can't. Uh, there are times in a real estate transaction where other parties involved in the transaction are gonna make you fix the problem. <laughs> so when when are you when do you have the freedom to, to kick the can down the road? So one is you're paying cash. Uh, if you're paying cash for a parcel, that means there's not a lender involved. Uh, usually the lender is the party that makes you fix problems before a transaction can close. Why is that? Well, the lender's worried about having good collateral, right? So most of the time in the United States, uh, when you're getting a loan to buy a piece of real estate, the real estate itself is the collateral. In other words, that's what the bank's gonna take to make sure that they get their money back. Uh, they'll take the parcel and sell it if you stop making your payments on the loan. So if you're paying cash, you eliminate the lender. Uh, the second uh, situation, um, so let's say that you aren't paying cash, you were, so you're getting a loan, um, which is the mo that's the most common situation that we deal with here in the United States. So somebody's getting a loan to buy a piece of property. Um, so you still may not have to fix the problems, um, and, he and here's why. Uh, the, th the second reason is the title company's foolish. Okay, and there's good company title companies and bad title companies, just like there's good land surveyors and there's bad land surveyors, and sometimes title companies make bad decisions, right? Uh, and you know they're in they're in the business of of taking risks. That's what insurance companies do. And so uh, you know I'm, I'm being a little bit slightly cynical and a little bit sarcastic. Sometimes the title insurance company looks at a a problem and says we don't think this is a big risk, so we're going to go ahead and and insure it. So if your title company is either foolish or uh, decides that the problem is an acceptable risk they're willing to insure, then you may not have to fix it. And then the third reason is um, uh, the lender's foolish. Um, so the lender, um, sometimes the title company won't want to cover the, the insure the, the potential problem. They're going to exclude that from coverage. And then, it, then it's up to the lender. The lender has to decide if they're going to make the loan without the insurance coverage from the title company for the problem. And sometimes lenders do that. It doesn't happen a lot. Lenders tend to be a little more conservative, more conservative than title insurance companies. Um, and so lenders don't typically like to make loans on properties that have problems, but occasionally you'll you'll get a lender that will decide uh, that they're gonna that they're gonna roll the dice on a potential problem. Um, I can probably count on my two hands the number of times I've seen that happen in 20 years, but it does happen. I've seen it happen a lot more in the last couple of years, the last year or two. I think that's just because we're in a very hot real estate market. You know, banks do compete with each other to make loans, and so they may they may overlook a minor problem uh, rather than than lose a potential loan. So, those are the situations when you can kick the can can down the road. If you're paying cash, if the title company is foolish or or decides to take the risk, or if your bank is foolish or decides to take the risk. Um, if you have any of those three factors, you may be able to not solve the problem uh, and close the transaction. So uh, if you've got one of those situations, is it a good idea? When should you kick the can down the road if you can on, on a boundary or land title or uh, land use problem? The answer is almost never. Uh, you should almost never do that. Uh, now, some of you that are watching this video are going to say, well, of course you're going to say that, Landon, because you, you get paid to fix problems. That's true. I do get, fi I do get paid to fix problems. Um, so let me explain my answer, right, so that you know I'm not just being greedy and selfish. Why is it almost always a bad idea to not fix the problem before the sale closes? 
And I've got some other videos that talk about this. We'll link to them in the description. Okay, so I'm going to give you three reasons why it's a bad idea to kick the can down the road. You need to fix the problem before the sale closes, or you need to make uh, you need to make the resolution of the problem part of the real estate purchase contract, and then a good attorney can help you to do that. So you can close the deal in the near term with a promise by the other party to, to solve the problem in the near future if you need to do that. Okay, so here's the three reasons why it's almost always a bad idea to kick the can down the road. Number one, it can limit, it, it can limit your ability to sell the property in the future. So just because there is a bank and a title insurance company that's willing to insure this transaction doesn't mean that you're gonna find a bank and a title company willing to insure the next tra transaction when you go to sell. So you could end up with a property that you can't sell, or at least you can't sell until the problem's fixed. So the real estate market changes, you know, banks' appetite for risk changes, title insurance companies, their appetite for risk changes. It could even change depending on the loan officer and the title insurance officer that are involved in the transaction. You can get the same title company in the same bank, you get different people at those institutions, and they won't insure or close a transaction that two different people at those same organizations might. So it just, you're taking a risk. If you, if you don't fix the problem right now before the close, you could find that when you go to sell the property, uh, you either can't sell it or you gotta sell it at a discount because of the problem. So you don't wanna put yourself in that situation, typically, especially if you're buying a property as, as an investment. The second thing is, it's always, uh, the second reason you wanna fix it now is it's always easier. It's, it's almost always easier to fix the problem now. It only gets harder to fix the problem as time passes. Um, and when I say easier, I also mean less expensive. Um, so just, you know, the passage of time, people's memories fade, you know, documents get harder to, to, documents get lost, or they get harder to read, or you don't understand the context, why the document says what it says, the real estate document. So it's just, it's always better to fix the problem now. I'll give you a quick example of that. We were working on a real estate transaction where the parcel was landlocked, but the owner had been using the driveway to the public road for 30 years that went across some other people's property and the title company was able to get uh, an affidavit from the owner. It's kind of like sworn testimony about their use and how long they'd been using it. And that, that would help establish a prescriptive easement for the driveway if that was ever needed. Um, you know, it, it, once, that, once that person dies or disappears, that former owner, now you can't go get that information that you need, right? And so you're, you're trying to rely on other collateral evidence and that's, that's just a bad deal, right? Fix the problem right now where you, where you still got the current seller involved in the transaction. They've got the history. It's just a smart thing to do. And then the third reason that you don't want to kick the can down the road is what seems like minor problems today can quickly turn into major problems down the road. I'll give you a quick example. Um, you've, we had a, a, a survey we did where uh, there was just all kinds of problems. The deeds were a mess. There was three parcels. Uh, we had a really hard time putting them down on the ground accurately. We got a reasonable location for two of the parcels that included the buildings that were on the site. And so the, uh, the lender and the title insurance company agreed to close the deal on just those two parcels. The third parcel, we, we just couldn't figure out where it was at on the ground. It was really hard. We offered some solutions to that, but nobody wanted to pay for it. So they, they worked a deal where they, they bought the two parcels with the buildings, the buyer did, um, and then they just leased the third parcel the parking lot parcel from the from the owner of, of that was selling and um and they were able to close the deal that way now here's what so they didn't we we told them you need to go in and fix this you need to do you need to file a, we'd already done a good survey I, we said you need to pay us we'll prepare a land description a good land description you can go down and file a corrective deed get this all cleaned up and they don't want to do that they want to pay for it okay so fast forward five years from now they, they plan to expand those buildings. They're gonna expand onto that parking lot. Okay, and, and I don't know what's gonna happen, but it wouldn't surprise me if, if everybody ten year, five or 10 years from now forgets about the debacle that we had trying to close this deal, and they go build an addition on this parcel that they don't even own, they're leasing it. And nobody knows where the boundaries of that third parcel are really at. So it could be that the building crosses the property line, the new building, right? Like, it just. That's just an example that goes to show what seems like a minor problem today, something that's not important. As time passes and development happens and uses change, the neighbors change what they're doing, man, what, what was a minor problem today can become a major problem in a few years. So for those three reasons, it's almost never a good idea to kick, kick the can down the road on a boundary, land title, or land use problem. 
if you're buying, if, if you're, you're in the process to buy a parcel and you're doing your due diligence and a consultant comes back and says, hey, we think we've got an issue, get it cleaned up before closing. Uh, don't, don't leave that, don't let that thing fester. Um, I'm always really surprised at the number of attorneys that we work with that represent clients in a land transaction and we provide the attorneys with an opportunity for a relatively small price to fix the problems before close and the, the clients just, the attorneys that work, that work for the client, they just, they kick the can down the road. And I think they're doing a disservice to their client. Um, I don't think they're really looking out for their client's interests in that situation. Um, and it, it, it surprises me, right? Good attorneys don't do that. So um, if, you're, if your attorney's telling you not to fix a problem like that before close, you need a new attorney. You need a new land attorney. And uh, you want a land attorney and a good boundary surveyor that are going to help you get, you know, we can fix almost any problem with a real estate parcel before escrow closes. Uh, we can work with you to get that problem solved, and uh, it's the smart thing to do.